Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. Mm -hmm. And we already have been talking about the Danish architect Hans J. Wegner in several videos. Um, we have an introduction to his life and career, a video mm -hmm. about his folding chairs, mm -hmm. and another about his like collaboration with a close friend, the Börje Mogensen. You're a bit obsessed with him, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I think we have even more videos about, uh, about him. But, All yeah. your idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but today we will yet again talk about Wegner, and more precisely, his round chairs. And best known of these is probably the JH501, or simply the The Share, mm -hmm. designed in 1949. But let's start this video somewhat earlier than that. Let's do. Yeah. Wegner was highly influenced by the architect Kåre Klint, yeah. who was the teacher at the School of Arts and Crafts in Copenhagen. Yeah. According to him, it was important for a furniture designer to study historical furniture models. And Wegner did exactly that. Mm -hmm. In the mid-40s, he was highly inspired by an antique Chinese chair found in Ole Wanscher's book Furniture Types. He was fascinated by the rounded top rail surrounding the sitter and giving proper support. In 1944, Wegner developed four different prototypes and two of them were put into production. A typical feature on all of these chairs uh, was the S-shaped lumbar support. Simultaneously, he was also working on several sketches of similar chairs designed without the support in the center of the back. One of these sketches shows a Chinese-inspired chair with an organically shaped top rail and four straight legs without any stretchers between them. This sketch is without doubt somewhat of a predecessor to the JH501, finished a few years later. Hmm. 1949 was indeed an important year in Danish design history. Mogensen launched his uh, sculptural shell chair and Finn Juhl exhibited the Schieftein and the Jüktchen chair. And also Wegner uh, launched several important pieces this year at the annual uh, Copenhagen Cabinet Makers Guild exhibition. Mm. Uh, he, uh, he designed his eye-catching folding chair JH512 and a um, less-known experimental shell chair inspired by the Eameses. Mm. Uh, but his collaboration with master cabinet maker Johannes Hansen demanded some traditional cabinet maker furniture. And just before the exhibition was to take place, Hansen demanded yet another chair. And it was to be a more traditional one uh, where old craftsmanship uh, would be essential. And he remembered the sketches he had made of a Chinese chair without this lumbar support. And in the last minute, actually, before the exhibition, the round chair was designed. Uh, but what is a round chair? Uh, well, it's a type of chair uh, with a solid uh, horizontal backrest that bends forward and becomes the armrests. Mm. Um, and this type of chair has a long tradition and has a close similarities with chairs found in ancient Greece, for example. And uh, these antique chairs inspired a long range of Danish designers, not least Kåre Klint and his uh, Fåborg mm. chair designed already in 1914. And also the organic bone chair designed by Finn Juhl in 1944 is another example of a successful modernist round chair. Mm. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, Wegner exhibited his round chair JH501 at the annual mm. exhibition in 1949. Mm. The exceptional detail in this chair is without doubt the solid top rail, like you just talked yeah, about. Yeah. The rounded back transforms into two propeller-like armrests, yeah. giving proper lumbar support. It's made from... Uh, it's made from three different pieces of wood joined together, creating it from one piece just wasn't possible. Because of doing so, the grain in the armrest would go in the wrong direction, with the result of the chair breaking. Yeah. You can't have that. No, that's sad. <laughs> Originally, the pieces were joined together using dowels, a both fragile and quite ugly looking solution. Mm -hmm. uh, wrapping the back in caning was necessary to hide the design flaw. The problem was solved the following year when uh, V-grooves were used to make the joints stronger. Suddenly, caning was no longer necessary. And this chair is often considered a beautiful sculpture, but it's actually a functional masterpiece. 
Every little detail has a function and is designed with a purpose. The visible joints between the legs and the top rail make it easier to finish the different pieces before assembly. The slightly curved seat makes the chair comfortable and just like ancient columns, the legs are wider in the center. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And the round chair exhibited in 1949 was an immediate success, celebrated in Denmark as well as in the US for example. Um, the workshop of Johannes Hansen was small with just a handful of employees, and it was impossible to deliver all the shares ordered. And this is obvious in this quote by Wegner. The Americans came to inquire whether they uh, could buy or make some of them. Uh, Johannes Hansen's workshop was small with only five or six assistants. Uh, they were not used to produce large numbers. If they could sell just the four shares we made for the show, we would be happy. <laughs> so they didn't really expect that no. success. <laughs> no. Um, and even if the round share was celebrated already in 1949, it wasn't until 1960 it became a megastar. And that's uh, thanks to uh, its comfort and quality. It's, it was selected for use in the first ever televised US presidential debate between candidates Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy. Mm -hmm. And each of the candidates sat in Wagner's round chair throughout the debates. And this was obviously the best of publicity. <laughs> After this, it was simply called the chair, a name still associated with this legendary piece. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Wigner continued developing the concept of round chairs for the rest of his mm. long career. We will now take a look at some of his most iconic mm. models. According to Wigner himself, the chair had quite a few flaws. First and, most, first and foremost, the uh, quite bulky armrests made it difficult to place around a table. Mm. To solve this problem, the JH505 cowhorn chair was mm. developed in 1952. The top rail rested only on the extended back legs and this made it possible to place the chair all the way next to the table. Mm. The sculptural back support was constructed from two pieces of wood joined together using wooden inlays, and this was not just a beautiful ornamentation. It also made the joint much stronger. Mm. We should also mention the bull chair, JH518, <laughs> introduced in 1957. As the name implies, it's somewhat sturdier version of the cowhorn chair, <laughs> with yeah. larger armrest and a thicker frame. Yeah. Several different versions of this chair were produced by Johannes Hansen in the following years. An even more voluminous chair <laughs> is the Buffalo, <laughs> designed in 1967. It differs quite a lot from his previous chairs. Not, not the names. No, the names are yeah. all... <laughs> With a large upholstered backrest, yeah. similar to the one used for the iconic office chair launched two years earlier. Oh. The ergonomical shape was a result of a collaboration with the physician Dr. Egil Snorason, who promoted the importance of proper lumbar support when sitting. Yeah. <laughs> Snorason is very funny in Swedish. Yeah, very not, funny. Not to you. No, but in Sweden we can't really say his name. <laughs> no. Uh, and in 1952, Wegner launched uh, the three-legged FH4103 heart chair. FH? Mm, yeah. Wow. Is that? Uh, it's Fritz Hansen, Hansen yeah. yes. Yeah. And yeah. like the cattle named chairs, it was designed to be able to be shoved all the way in around the table. Mm. Uh, but unlike his cabinet maker uh, pieces, uh, this chair was adapted for industrial mass production by Fritz Hansen. Yeah. And the hard chair was a stackable and extremely neat chair. Six chairs could easily be placed around uh, the matching dining table, and this makes it uh, popular in smaller apartments. Yeah, and they weigh like nothing. Nothing, right? yeah. It's a very lightweight and uh, yeah, functional chair, yeah, really. Very, very. Uh, it's interesting to note that the hard chair was launched the same year as the three-legged ant chair, mm. both produced by Fritz Hansen. Yeah. Uh, Arne Jakobsen and Wegner uh, addressed the same problem with uh, designing these two chairs, but came up with quite different solutions. Yeah, they yeah. look completely 
completely different, but totally. they, in a way they are quite similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And finally, we must show you two round chairs designed by Wegner in 1987 for uh, PP Möbler, originally intended to be used uh, on the Danish ferries, so it's like public space furniture. Mm, yeah. And these chairs are highly simplified versions of uh, their predecessors, adapted for serial production with a relatively low retail price. And they're hardly as elegant and looks like something Börje Mogensen could have designed. That's not good. Now, they are quite boring actually, but uh, perhaps uh, a logic thing to design for like a fairy. But sad to end like that. Yeah, it is. It is. But, but... that's the thing with all these Danish designers. They didn't really end well <laughs> when it came to design. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, and that's all we had to say about Wagner's round chairs. And hope you found it interesting. Yes, hope you did. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Thank you.